Hi, this is Max Drake. I'd like to talk about this um, uh, attendance app today. Um, it's basically uh, a proof of concept at this point in time. I'm using a lot of the ideas that I was developing in the reservation app, uh, which I was doing for a reservation for re restaurant type thing, and I brought it across into an attendance one. I have thought about using the attendance one, and one of the big appeals with that was the actual email whitelist where you give people a PIN number. So therefore, each student would normally have their own device, and then their email's tied to that device. So they can't go and log in for their mate. They've got to log in for themselves. So the idea is that there's an input. Um, uh, let me just go through there and check that out. And there's one in there. Um, and what this does is it's it's working off a lot of the things. I've just been trying to clean up some codes and uh, taking advice from other people about um, uh, how to build the code even in the first place. Um, the idea is you go into the input. At the moment, I've left it totally open just so that I have a pull-down list and uh, we have done George for a while and I select a period. And basically, I add that in. That one comes in at this point in time. I would use a trigger like um, on change and so this comes in so they've only filled out the name and the time uh, and it's coming in today so it's only today this breaks it out so that i've then got my uh, events and again there's a lot of um, uh, array formulas coming through here to do this now i want to do a couple of things here straight away i'm using this combined cell here to actually compare that against a list so i'm using a v lookup and this VLOOKUP errors out because what happens is, um, I'll demonstrate it just here, is, sorry, going back to that other sheet there, is when I do the input, um, this is on, on row three. So when I actually go and compare and say it's comparing against there, if it's not in that table, it pushes it into the calendar and then it deletes that row. So I've only got two rows here. So it breaks my formula and if I just go back and I'll just add another person in here now and uh, I'll just add Jane and the period is two o'clock in the Arvo and add that there and go into here um, uh, it, it won't compare now so what I've done in the formula is um, I've just added I just rewrite that formula back in there straight away and then it does a compare and that formula basically does this um, if I just go and grab that ref and go and grab um, that cell there um, it's looking it up and it's not there so if I actually just take that uh, copy and paste value uh, Do, 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 do. Where's paste value? There we go. It's in there. So it comes up. So this cell suddenly is not empty. So if it's not empty, that means it's already in here. So if I now go into there, sorry, now if I do the attendance and go into here, instead of pushing this into the calendar because it thinks it's already in there, what it'll do is it'll just delete that row. So again, um, on there, compare input, it's just running the script and it just blows. Now, if I just go through and do another one again, and I'm just going to go and put uh, Jane in again, and I'm going to give her an earlier time and go add into there. And if I come into here and it populates through there and I run that again, you'll see this toast comes up. So that says that it's actually gone into the calendar. So in the calendar, there's all my information of coming through. So that's pushing the information into the calendar. There's a couple of little glitches with this at the moment. One of them is that you can actually just go and submit a name without anything else. And if I do that, then I get a whole load of errors. So therefore, I've got to do some validation for that. The other thing that I can do is that I can go into there and actually just put in a period without any other information there, and that can go in as well. 
So, and that doesn't give the errors, but there's no information to be pushed into the event, but it would mess things up. So I'd actually have to look at the procedures to actually blow those away. The thing with blowing those away is that you can delete them and that's fine, but the person who actually half inputted that has no knowledge of the fact that it has gone through. They might have just assume that it's gone through. So I haven't been able to send a message back to them to say, it's Mogador, can you please do something about it? If there's an email there, you could actually do possibly a trigger with an email through to that to do that um, which would be one process to do um, so that's the process that I've been trying to refine and one of the things that I've been trying to do uh, George B was saying that my code was a bit scrappy so I've been trying to break it down into smaller elements and then this one here did this compare function goes and basically goes and finds that cell and then it says if it can't find it in that V lookup then run this function, append it to that thing, and then run another one of add the event to the calendar. And if it finds it in the other one, then delete the duplicate information. So I've just tried to start writing smaller bits of code so that I can make them a bit more reusable as well. Some of the other ones I haven't because it's already all built there, so I wasn't going to build it all from scratch. So that's on the side of actually pushing information in there. Um, uh, so there's there. So there's nothing to stop somebody using their own device and logging in remotely. Um, to, but another thing that I, I would like to do as well is at the moment, see, if, the, if you pinned into, onto your own device, you wouldn't actually have to put your name in. It would actually automatically do your email. So we just need to do the period. But there's no reason why you couldn't actually just put in for all the periods of the day and then go home first thing. So one of the ways that I was thinking that you could do that is that you could use conditional. So inside of the um, choices sheet, I've only got today. So it's only looking at today in the calendar. I'm only interested in today. Um, uh, and it's just got the date. And it's got these periods. Now, you could end up with only one period there by actually just putting conditional statements. If it's between 8.30 and 9.45, show 9 o'clock. If it's between 9.45 and 10.45, show 10 o'clock. So you can only book in to those periods during those particular times. So that's one thing that you could actually do to advance. Another thing that would sort of concern me is, again, on the retrieval side of things, what actually happens is it goes into the calendar, says what's on that day, which is today, and grab everything. So first thing in the morning, there's not going to be very much, but later on in the day, there's going to be a lot more. So it goes in, it grabs that information, and uh, retrieves the calendar day. So it just blows all that data away, and then just goes and looks at it again. So it just pulls it back through. So the import from the calendar has been done. And here I'm just using a bit of a split on the things. So what I then do again is similar to the other ones. I bring it into a table that I'm doing now this is doing this again. That should be A2 to A. A2 A2 to A. Now hopefully. Oh. See there now. Oh, I didn't know that. So again, this is similar to the conditional formatting. I'm using for the cell values that I've actually got. I'm going to check why that's doing that. It shouldn't be. Um, uh, what it's doing is it's comparing uh, this, a concatenation of this item, this item, this item, this item. This is dummy because I've actually got the actual date formula. And you said, sorry, the time formula is actually in this formatting. But what was happening, it pushed this calendar, it pushed this table out quite a lot with all of this in there. It looked quite messy. So I just put a bit of text in here and it's actually looking up those. But it's comparing um, uh, the previous table, the retrieve table. Sorry, it's comparing that cell against that retrieve table. And there's Abdul at nine o'clock. So um, in the table there. There he is, so he's got an A. Initially, I was using right, which was actually giving the same number, so I was using one cell, one unit or uh, numeral on the right, and it was nine. But I actually found if you've got the first letter, it sort of visually gives you a little bit of an idea because these, um, uh, this, you haven't got too much format in that chart. So in the, in the, 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 uh, 
app itself you've got the attendance and people can actually see what their attendance is if it's um, all there so that's the attendance record that you can have for today so you could have um, and my was actually thinking that you would actually have two apps because the students app can only put in information for that student for a period or something like that that only controls that for the um, uh, teacher um, they may have to put in somebody who's sick through the day or they may have to say that somebody has got special permission or um, uh, their phone. They left their phone at home, so they've got to actually put the information in for that particular person. So they need a little bit more facilities. And instead of actually only showing one day, they can show the whole week. So similar to the reservation app that actually you were at, you could click on a whole lot of different dates. The uh, uh, teacher's one could actually see. So if there's somebody who's been skipping a specific class or something like that they can see that and actually ask a query on that the other thing is once you've actually got this data because it's all just sitting in the google calendars which is just cool as um, uh, what you can actually do is that you could make a, co a, a, a pull down bit of code that such the the um, teacher could do a report so he could you could give a start date and an end date and it would actually just write to a different sheet with all of the information from the calendar that it just pulls out and puts into there or else it could actually do a term report and just show everybody's um, uh, attendance records straight away so once you've got this set up it's got quite a lot of power in it and again the validation process I think is quite important to make sure that we don't get dirty data in there like that um, and once we know that the clean data is going in um, we can actually, uh, I think it's very, very powerful. I actually think it's a handy thing to, to, to use for attendance. Um, it has a certain elegance about it. Uh, again, you know, from the point of view of the uh, teacher, you would think that the teacher would actually have um, access through the sheet itself to actually do some of the building. So you could end up putting a bit more functionality through there to allow for certain things to be assessed through. Again, another thing with the attendance or with the choice table here is that you've actually got periods or you've got a period of time. You could also put a naming convention against there. Um, there's several other things that you can do. And again, these might not be names. They might be emails or something. Or um, uh, it's one of those things. I think once you start building it, you can end up with um, a lot of extra features. Anyway, I hope that's been of interest for you. If you've enjoyed it, can you please give me a thumbs up? If you're interested in um, ideas to add to the app, either build them yourself and tell me about them so that I can actually think um, and look and see what well stuff you've done, or else put it down as an idea and uh, I'll see if I can pod along and do something on that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been of help.